Socialism is when the government does stuff. And it's more socialism, the more stuff it does. And if it does a real lot of stuff, it's communism. This is a meme you will often be sent when debating with international socialists, so much so that it is often taken as true even by supporters of liberty. But is it the case? Let's take a look at what Wolf is saying in the clip and see if it lines up with the etymological reality of socialism. We have a mass of people, most Americans, who think that socialism has something to do with the government being in charge. No, that's not the idea. The idea was to get the government because with that power you could then make the transition. It wouldn't be the transition, it would be the step that would allow you to make the transition. And what would the transition be? Let's go back. To reorganize enterprises, factories, offices, stores, so that they would work in the interests of the whole community because the whole community would be making the decisions. Okay, let's look at what he is saying here. We have a mass of people, most Americans, who think that socialism has something to do with the government being in charge. No, that's not the idea. So in this first section he's saying that 1. Socialism has nothing to do with the government being in charge. The idea was to get the government because with that power you could then make the transition. Okay, but here he is saying that 2. You need to take control of the government to make the transition. So socialism clearly does have something to do with the government being in charge, or else it wouldn't have that power that Wolf's socialism requires. It wouldn't be the transition, it would be the step that would allow you to make the transition. What would the transition be? Let's go back. To reorganize enterprises, factories, offices, stores, so that they would work in the interests of the whole community, because the whole community would be making the decisions. Yes, and how would you go about all the reorganizing? With that power that the government wields. This is something to do with the government being in charge. This is not a system wherein the government leaves people alone. Leave alone, also known as laissez-faire, is what capitalism provides. Socialism is inherently opposed to laissez-faire and is therefore inherently in favor of government intervention. The question was, did the state transform the economy? And the answer is, no, they didn't. Not because they're bad and not because they're stupid or nothing like that. This is the way the history worked out. It's an understandable thing. Wolf's point here appears to be that because the state failed to transform the economy in the way that he wants, that socialism isn't statist. Not even the argument that the specific state he's talking about, the USSR, wasn't socialist, which would also be a very easy claim to argue against. You can say any number of things about any individual state one could imagine, and you can say that they aren't socialist for reasons X, Y, and Z, but that does absolutely nothing to further the idea that socialism has nothing to do with statism. Poor Stalin! Well, he had to go to the Russian people who had sacrificed unspeakable in their lives. And what was he going to say to them? Thank you very much. You've sacrificed unbelievably now for the last 15 years. It's 1930 since the revolution. I'm glad to announce to you all what we have achieved is state capitalism. We've got a whole nother sacrifice for God knows how many years to get to. They would have ridden him out of the town on a rail. He couldn't. So he did what politicians do. He substituted the wish for the reality. We've made it. We're here. Socialism is when the government does stuff. And it's more socialism the more stuff it does. And if it does a real lot of stuff, it's communism. We have made it indeed. So the meme quote is a parody of Stalin redefining socialism to what the USSR was doing. The argument Wolf is making here will fall apart if only I could show state capitalism to be an oxymoron, which I do below. For now, I will give my definitions of socialism, capitalism, and much more, and I'll give a brief explanation of where they come from, and I will cite my sources for that definition, predominantly the Oxford English Dictionary. Private. Belonging to or for the use of one particular person. Coming from the Latin privus, meaning single or individual. Public. Of or concerning the people as a whole coming from the Latin publicus, meaning of the state. Common, belonging to or involving the whole of a community or the public at large. Group, a number of people or things that are located and gathered or classed together. Nation, a large body of people united by common descent, history, culture or language inhabiting a particular state or territory. Free market, a society without conflict. Private sector, 
the part of the national economy that is not under direct control of the state, businesses and industries that are not owned or controlled by the government. Public sector, the subset of the economy that is under government control, capitalism, private control of the means of production, an economic and political system in which trade and industry are controlled by private owners rather than by the state. Private enterprise, a business or industry that is managed by independent companies or private individuals rather than being controlled by the state. Collectivism, the practice or principle of giving a group priority over each private individual in it. Socialism, a political and economic theory of social organization which advocates that the means of production, distribution and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole. Or in Marxist theory, a transitional state between the overthrow of capitalism and the realization of communism. Means of production. Note, this is synonymous with capital goods. Physical assets that a company uses in the production process to manufacture products and services that consumers will later use. Capital goods include buildings, machinery, equipment, vehicles and tools. Capital goods are not finished goods, instead they are used to make finished goods. In Marxist theory, the raw materials and means of labour, tools, machines, etc. employed in the production process. Also in Marxist theory, the combination of the means of labour, such as machines, tools and equipment, and the subject of labour used by workers to make products. Marxism Marxism is a social, political and economic philosophy named after Karl Marx. It examines the effect of capitalism on labour, productivity and economic development and argues for a worker revolution to overturn capitalism in favour of communism. Marxism posits that the struggle between social classes, specifically between the bourgeoisie or capitalists and the proletariat or workers, defines economic relationships in a capitalist economy and will inevitably lead to revolutionary communism. Economy The organisation of the resources of a community. The system by which a given society allocates scarce resources. Often people will conflate socialism and Marxism. Wolf does this constantly in the previously referenced clips. This is a subversive view that has taken root thanks to the overtly Frankfurt and Keynesian influenced lens taught to most people. But it is not the case. Marx and Engels built their communism on a long history of prior thinkers. Marx himself believed that primitive man practiced Marxism, implying this history even within Marxist thought. Over the centuries that built socialism, the ideas of social control over the means of production would spawn many ideologies. Marxism, National Socialism, Syndicalism, which later became Fascism, and many more. The common feature of all of them is that they are all statist in nature, which I will show now. Per our definition, corroborated by three separate mainstream dictionaries, socialism is, outside of Marxism, defined as group control of the economy or the means of production. Now this group can be any number of things, it can be the workers or the Volk or Soviets, but their defining feature is that it has control over the economy or the means of production. So this group necessarily must control the public sector, which is controlled by the government. It is nonsensical to attempt to describe group control of that which is private. So the group that controls the economy, the subset that it has control over being the public sector, is the government or the state. So by our mainstream definitions, a society is socialist to the extent that there is a public sector and capitalist to the extent that there is a private sector. Statism is socialism, socialism is statism. To carry on from this, we may now see that state capitalism is oxymoronic. Capitalism being private control of the means of production, so the private sector is the subset of the economy that is capitalist in nature, and further that a private or free market would be one in where the entire economy is the private sector. It would be a laissez-faire or a leave alone. In this free market, any existence of coercion or aggression, that is, any actions that cause a conflict, will be perversions of the market, given the definition above. This all means that capitalism is explicitly non-state in the same way that socialism is explicitly state. So state capitalism essentially means state non-state. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content.